In this video, I wanna go through the key differences between measures and calculated columns. We're gonna go through what I think are their three key differences, as well as when and why you should be using one or the other. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. I wanted to cover this topic today because one of my colleagues asked me what are the differences between using measures and calculated columns and it's a perfectly valid confusion to make especially if you're using them and having the same results on both so it's probably easier if I can show you some examples um, and show you the key differences between one or the other. So here I've created a data set of orders and customers. If we go to the data quickly you'll see that we have some information about different orders by different customers and we have uh, customer details like their contact name and in the data model itself we have a one-to-many relationship between the customers table and the orders table and if we go back to the report view here you'll see that i've already created two values here so i've created uh, total sales for a calculate column and total sales as a measure and i've just put them in a the screen here just to show you where the confusion lies so when you look at these two uh, cards here that we have on the report although they are um, measure or calculated column they have the same value so you might be confused as to which one you should be using or you can use either or so the first difference between the two is how they're calculated if you imagine calculated columns they are pre-calculated and stored in your model as rows so you can see on the table here if we go to the order details you'll see that the total sales calculated column shows up as a, as a separate column in this table that you have here. But unlike the calculated columns, measures are not pre-calculated in your model. It's actually calculated in real time. So it only calculates whatever it needs to calculate when you use them in your report and it recalculates every time you introduce filter context on it. And a key thing to note here is that you can see that we have the total sales measure in the order details table, but you can't see it here as a row because it's calculated real time and it's not stored in your data model. So here the general rule of thumb is if you want to keep your data models small and manageable, you want to be using measures as much as you can. The second difference between the two is how they're stored. So as I showed you before, because the calculated columns are stored as rows within your tables, it means that these columns already has a row context, which means that you can implicitly apply aggregates on them on your reports. So if we go to our report view here and let's go back to this calculated column measure here and you'll see that if I click this uh, button here to change the aggregation of the fields here you're able to apply implicitly what aggregation type it should have and at the moment it defaults into a sum which is what gives us the total sales uh, value that we have here but for example you can change it with using other aggregates like average minimum maximum or count things like this measures on the other hand doesn't understand row context so it means that if you want to aggregate the values in your measures you need to explicitly define how your values are being aggregated so you'll see the difference here if I go to the total sales measure and I click this arrow again the same you'll see that it doesn't show us the aggregation types that you know we had in the calculated column and we say we define the aggregations explicitly because if we go to the total sales measure calculation you'll see that we use a sum x uh, iterator function here which does the aggregation for us so it means that we're explicitly saying for the total sales measure sum up all the values that you get from these uh, unit price and quantity and just to compare this with the total sales calculated column you'll see that we don't explicitly define how it's aggregated so we don't say sum it all up all we say is give me the value the sales between unit price and quantity and in order to show it here as a 
card, we have to implicitly say sum it all up. Another thing to note with the measures is that because they don't have raw context, it doesn't matter where they're stored in your data model. So at the moment you'll see that we have the total sales calculated column in our order details table and we really can't move it around without breaking anything. But with the total sales measure, if we go to the data view or the model view, and you'll see that if I move the home table from the order details to customers, so just moving the measures around, that won't have any impact with our calculations at all. And you'll see if we go back to the order details um, and see if we can move the calculated column, you won't have the option to move that. When working with calculations in Power BI, it's best practice to explicitly define how your values are calculated within your measures. This makes sure that if anyone uses your calculations in the future, they'll know exactly what the behavior to expect when they're using it in their own calculations. The third key key difference that I found is there are other utilities. So because a calculated column has raw context, it means that you can use it as a filter value in your reports. However, because measures don't have a raw context, you can't use them as filters in your reports. Let me show you the difference. Here's an example that I already created. It's a calculated column of customer names. And what I've done is I've used the related function to bring in the customer contact names from the customers table into the order details table. And because this customer name is a calculated column, we can go to our report and bring it in here and use it as a filter. So if I convert this into a filter, if we want to see what are the total sales by customer, we're able to get those aggregations with no issue. Because calculated columns have raw context, you can also use them to uh, create relationships between multiple tables, which you can't do with measures. So if you go here in the model view, you'll see that you have the total sales calculated column, which you can use to create relationships between tables. However, if you try to do that with the measure, you'll see that you aren't able to you know, create that relationship. You can't drag it around because it doesn't have a raw context for you to use. Now that you know what the differences are between measures and calculated columns, let's look at some examples and see when you should be using measures or calculated columns. So if you're doing calculations like calculating total sales, the general rule of thumb is you should be using measures. Uh, this is because you want to be explicit, as I said before, you want to be explicit with what the behavior is of your calculations. And using measures actually forces you to be explicit about how your calculations are done. So let's do another example. Let's say you wanted to bring in the customer names uh, in the orders table from the customers table. And to create this kind of lookup field, you can only do it with calculated columns because measures don't have the same raw context that calculated columns have. So let's do another example. If you wanted to group your orders based on the number of sales, so you want to create a grouping based on uh, low, medium, or high sales, you want to be using a calculated column for this kind of columns. This is because the groupings need to have a raw context in order to use them as uh, filters within your reports. So let's try to create a quick example here. So let's create a new calculated column here and let's create a grouping. So let's name it group by sales and let's do an if logic here. So if the um, if our sales is greater than 500 pounds, we will do we'll make it high. Otherwise, we want to give it low. So it's a very simple if and else logic that just categorizes our groups our sales based on their sales. Now, if you used it as a calculated column, you should be able to drag it here as a filter. So if you wanted to see what the totals are for those, you are able to select one or the other. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you clarify what the differences are between measures and calculated columns in Power BI. Leave a like on this video if it helped you. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching, guys. See you again on the next one.